All of us have an inner ferret, a glimmer of something catches our eye and we have to have it, but why? You could argue that all of us just need a few things in life, like food, shelter, and love. Everything else is just decoration. After all, we're all just passing through. So why do we feel the need to amass piles and piles of stuff, sometimes even creating a fortress of things against the world with the stuff that we buy? So is materialism genetic or is it learned? A 2009 study entitled Material Studies Are Largely in the Family looked at this question, and they did this by recruiting 240 same-sex identical twins and looking at what what their acquisition behavior is. Researchers knew that individual differences like personality and values are about 45% heritable, but they were really surprised when they found out that the twins' acquisition behavior was largely because of their environmental factors and not their genes. In other words, materialism is learned. An extreme form of materialism is hoarding, which is defined as an excessive collection of objects and the inability to discard them. It can go horribly awry, like the case of the Collier brothers who were found dead in their Harlem mansion in 1947, literally entombed by the more than 150 tons of stuff that they had accumulated. Hoarding is believed to be a pathological brain disorder, and it can sometimes be a symptom of other things like impulse control or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So if you have a really large life event, like you lose a loved one, that can sometimes trigger this hoarding behavior. You'll often see aspects of narcissism in hoarders who may have been rejected by a parent as a child. So that bond that they missed out with an adult, they take that love and they project it onto stuff filling in the void and ascribing a lot more meaning to them than they actually should have. But what about non-hoarders? Well, researchers at Columbia University Medical Centers monitored the brain activity in shoppers who were just browsing and shoppers who were about to make a purchase, and they found some really marked differences. It turns out that the purchasers were releasing a ton of dopamine, a chemical associated with both pain and pleasure, but also the creation of new memories. So think about a mouse in a maze looking for that cheese reward at the end, and that mouse recalls calling all those twists and turns that it had to take in order to get that morsel of food in the future. In a sense, we humans find our way back through the maze of consumerism to experience that burst of pleasure in our form of cheese buying stuff. So now you have to ask the question, have wealthy countries produced acquisition addicts? And why does cheese taste so good? All right, time to fess up. Do you have, say, a closet full of striped shirts that you keep adding to, or a nun figuring collection that is bursting at the seams? That's me. Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for more mind-blowing videos.